Welcome back. You're watching ASEAN Challenge and on to ASEAN Interview. We take a look at the situation or a lesson learned for life about the Lion Air crash in which we t take a look at the life of Intan Siyari um, in which made the headlines after she took a photo or posed for a photo for her wedding in which was alone due to the fact that her fiancé was one of the 189 passengers on board the doomed Lion Air flight JT-61 in which crashed into the Java Sea on October 29th. ค่ะมาในช่วงของ ASEAN Interview นะคะเรามีอีกหนึ่งข่าวที่ถือว่าเป็นบทเรียนนะคะของวงการการบินเลยก็ว่าได้ค่ะเนื่องจากนะคะนางสาวอิดันนะคะไซยารีวัย26ปีนะคะคู่มั่นของนายประมาประตามานะคะเป็นหนึ่งในผู้เคาะร้ายจากเหตุเครื่องบินสายการบิน l ลออนแอร์นะคะตกที่อินโดนีเซียนั่นเองค่ะซึ่งถือว่าเป็นข่าวหน้าหนึ่งเลยนะคะหลังจากที่เธอได้โพสต์รูปภาพของเธอนะคะที่สวมใส่ชุดแต่งงานนะคะเพียงลําพังโดยที่ไม่ได้มีเจ้าบ่าวยืนอยู่ด้านข้างนั่นเองนะคะซึ่งเหตุการณ์นี้ค่ะเธอก็ได้เล่าว่าทางเจ้าบ่าวหรือว่าแฟนหนุ่มของเธอหรือว่าคู่มั่นของเธอนะคะได้พูดติดตลกนะคะถือว่าเป็นเหตุการณ์ที่มันเกิดขึ้นจริงแล้วเธอก็ไม่ได้อยากให้เกิดขึ้นนะคะเพราะว่าคู่มั่นของเธอเนี่ยได้บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเขาไม่กลับมาจากเที่ยวบินนี้เธอจะต้องถือภาพของเขาเข้าไปในพิธีแต่งงานนั่นเองค่ะซึ่งในที่สุดแล้วเขาก็ไม่ได้กลับมาจริงๆนะคะซึ่งบิดาของนายริโอนันดาปรามตามานะคะก็ได้ยื่นฟ้องนะคะร้องบริษัทโบอิงซึ่งอันนี้ก็ถือว่าเป็นเหตุการณ์นะคะที่เป็นบทเรียนนะคะของวงการการบินเลยก็ว่าได้เดี๋ยวเราไปรับชมข่าวกันค่ะIt was a day Itan Ida Sayari had waited for 13 years, but instead of exchanging vows with her childhood friend and fiancé, Dr. Rio Nanda Pratama, she was alone. Pratama, who was one of the 189 passengers on board the doomed Lion Air flight JT-610 that crashed in the Java Sea on October 29th, never made it to the wedding. Pratama's father filed a lawsuit against a Boeing company in the Circuit Court of Cook County on Wednesday, November 14th, alleging that a defect in the design of the 737 MAX 8 aircraft caused it to crash. While the investigation on the reason of the crash is still ongoing, Sayari is trying to move on and wore her wedding gown on the day she was supposed to marry Pratama to say her final goodbye. I want him, who is now on the other side, to know I'm happy. Sayari told Reuters in Jakarta, this is my last respect for him. It was lessons as usual for students of the Lion Air Run Pilot School Ankasa Training Center, who were going through a Boeing 737 simulated landing just four days after the fatal flight that claimed all 189 lives on board. The crash of a Lion Air jet on October 29th into the Sea of Jakarta has put a spotlight back on the airline's safety record, although the cause of the crash remains undetermined. Trainee pilots with Lion Air who spoke to Reuters rattled off the various certifications they were trying to attain while expressing confidence that their safety training is adequate for their future careers. Potential pilots who had graduated from vocational schools or flight schools go directly into Ankasa Training Center and pursue further pilot education for around 18 months, after which they start jet simulation training and four months later they could be tested to qualify for flying. This process, which takes an average two years, results in a relatively young batch of graduates. These graduates go on to attain a pilot certification by flying as a first officer for up to 100 hours. They will then need to clock at least 3,000 more flying hours to be considered for a promotion to a captain. Still, oftentimes, those qualified to be promoted to captain could be as young as being in their early 20s with up to four years of experience. Ancasa's principal, Captain Debio Soesilo, contended that nothing is missed when soon-to-be pilots were put through rigorous simulation sessions covering all possible scenarios before they were allowed to fly. Since a non-fatal crash in Bali in 2013, Lion Air has sought to improve safety by gaining European Aviation Safety Agency or EASA certification for its pilot training and maintenance facilities. The budget airline was taken off a European Union blacklist in 2016 after the EU determined it met international safety standards. None of Indonesia's roughly 100 airlines, most of them tiny, remain on the EU blacklist. 
Indonesia's civil aviation safety regulator mandates that a pilot is allowed to fly a maximum of 110 hours a month, above the 100-hour standard for many other countries. Two Indonesian pilots told Reuters on condition of anonymity that it was common for Lion Air pilots to fly beyond the permitted limit by using an unofficial logbook. Lion Air Managing Director Daniel Putut, a former pilot and Lion Air's Managing Director, said the carrier complied with all regulatory requirements. No, obviously, we follow the regulatory standards, so we follow our regulator, our CISR, told us about the maximum uh, hours per pilot is uh, 110, then we go through it, so we, we comply with this uh, regulation. You can check to our data. But its latest crisis illustrates the challenge relatively new carriers face as they try to keep pace with unstoppable demand for air travel in developing nations, while striving for standards that mature markets took decades to reach. The privately owned budget carrier was founded in 1999. Its aircraft have been involved in at least 15 safety incidents and it has been placed under tougher international safety restrictions than other Indonesian airlines. It will now be subjected to more intensive inspections than other airlines, authorities said. Indonesian President Joko Widodo had also ordered a review of all flight safety regulations. Indonesia is one of the world's fastest-growing aviation markets, but its safety record has been patchy. Its transport safety panel investigated 137 serious aviation incidents from 2012 to 2017. And that was the ASEAN interview for this week and wraps up our program as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Sawadee ka. Sawadee ka. Thank you.